This question is about energy and rotational motion. Pause the recording and read through the question carefully. So this question is asking us to find what proportion of the ball's kinetic energy is rotational. And we're also given some information about the ball and its motion. So for this cricket ball, which has both um, a linear velocity and an angular velocity, the kinetic energy of the ball, the total kinetic energy of the ball, will be made up of two components. There'll be a component of the kinetic energy from the linear motion, and there will also be a component of the kinetic energy from the rotational motion. The expression for the kinetic energy from the linear motion is given by half times the mass of the object times velocity squared. And the kinetic energy from the rotational component of the motion is given by a half times i, which is the moment of inertia of the object, times the angular velocity squared. In this problem, we're trying to find the proportion that is rotational. And that will be the rotational component of the kinetic energy divided by the total kinetic energy. Let's find it as a percentage, so we'll times that by 100%. So filling in our expressions for those quantities, that gives us a half times the moment of inertia times the angular velocity squared over the total kinetic energy, which was the linear component plus the rotational component. And you might notice that we can cancel some things out already, and that leaves us with this expression that the proportion is i omega squared over mv squared plus i omega squared. So now let's work out what some of these quantities are. Now the moment of inertia of an object depends on both the mass of the object and the distribution of mass within the object relative to its rotational axis. So for a solid sphere, which is what we've assumed this cricket ball to be, rotating about its diameter, um, from the formula sheet, the moment of inertia is given as two-fifths times the mass of the ball times the radius squared. Now let's work out our angular velocity, omega, which is the rate of change of angle that the object moves through. And what we've got to be careful here is what units we want this in. So we want the angular velocity to be measured in radians per second. So we need to convert our a rotation rate of 2,250 rotations per minute into radians per second. So in a minute, our object will go through 2,250 rotations, and each rotation is 2 pi radians, and that's in a minute. So to turn that into seconds, we just divide by 60, which you can work out to be 75 pi radians per second. So let's substitute our expression for our, our moment of inertia into our expression for the proportion of kinetic energy that's rotational. And that gives us 2 fifths times the mass times the radius squared times the angular velocity squared over m times the linear velocity squared plus the same expression for the rotational kinetic energy. And what you may notice at this point is that actually all these terms have the mass of the ball in them. So actually, the mass cancels out, and we don't even need to know that, so we've given some additional information in the problem just to confuse us. And at this point, we can fill in our numbers. So that becomes 2 fifths times the radius squared, which was 0 0.035 squared, putting that into metres, times our angular velocity squared, divided by our linear velocity squared, which was 144 kilometers per hour. Let's turn that into meters per second. And if you type that all into your calculator, you should find that you end up with 4% of the total kinetic energy of the ball is due to its rotational motion.